this workshop, I think we call it European injection techniques. Uh, the truth is, all injection techniques come from Europe. <laughs> there were like uh, 20, 30 years before things came over to America. I want to, um, I will in a moment review with you the history of how injections came about and why. And um, the, the original idea was to, to numb things. Yeah? And I'll show you the history of numbing things, which is quite um, colorful. Um, I know that uh, today things have moved fairly quickly in the last 10 years by uh, including PRP and uh, stem cell injections um, into the picture. You know, we do, we work a lot with ozone in the office. Um, and I want to, in, in these three days, introduce you to the variety of, of things that you can do with the needle using um, uh, PRP to do uh, facelifts, but also to do um, shots for sexual dysfunction or sexual improvements. Like there's some radical, wonderful new, new things that have emerged in the field. And so I want to introduce you to the variety of it. Um, in the beginning, I want to teach you the things that you absolutely can do on Monday safely. You know, that you don't have to tremble and you, you can do a lot of things um, with very short needles and with very little material that are absolutely stunning what you can do with that and they have been largely overlooked in the US. Uh, the tendency has been um, the longer the needle and the bigger the needle the better because you can charge more money for it but um, the, the purpose has been lost very often that actually when you use needles on someone you want to deliver either an effective healing agent exactly to the location where you want it or you want to use some neurological reflexes to achieve some neurological change. You know, so there is, there is a reason for it. It's not about um, looking at the codes uh, of the insurance companies to see what injection technique, how, how you have to call it to get the most money for it. That has moved the field a little bit in the wrong, in the wrong direction. You know, that many of the simple techniques um, have been overlooked and so I want to introduce you from this angle. Um, most of you are aware that we are heading sort of for a difficult time, like on the planet. Um, not just the global warming, but the, um, the corporate world that has taken over uh, directing governments and what decisions to make that's not leading us in a good direction right now. Uh, in fact, and we are, we are much closer to a real crisis point. You know, so the reason is that the conditions in the environment that are not good right now, they're increasing exponentially. And exponential is a curve like this that's going to reach vertical in a few years. Um, yeah, I always um, like to give the example because people don't know really from a feeling what exponential means. Yeah. When you take a postcard and you stack 50 postcards over each other, you get a certain, certain sickness, uh, thickness, right? I don't know how much it will be. It won't be very much. When you take a postcard and fold it upon itself 50 times, anybody knows what the distance, what the length is? That's exponential. Yeah? That's in math how exponential is explained. That would be the distance from Earth to Moon and back folding a postcard 50 times. You know. And we're in that thing with the environmental problems that we have. You know, the figures in the US are not honestly published, but in Europe they are that in less than the last 10 years, 75% of all insects have died, has disappeared. And with that, 75% of songbirds and a lot of other species. And that is you know, going like this. That means in a few years, um, 
you cannot, <laughs> will be alone here. It will be a lonely planet um, if it's just us. Um, and so, when when patients come to us in our practice, you know, they're somewhere part of that. You know, so you know, in my other work with ART, we focus very much on the increasing toxin content in our matrix in our system, um, and secondary to that, the increasing amount of pathogens that, that are thriving in a contaminated environment, and <clears throat> the the exposure of Wi-Fi that's leading to a rapid destruction to our brain as we have known it. You know, so that there is a, almost a conspiracy of factors that are coming together. And we, um, we realized very early on that in order to detoxify someone or to treat infections, it is not enough to pop some pills in the mouth or give some IV shots and hoping that whatever you're giving is going to end up in the place where you're hoping. You know, when you want to, for example, uh, detoxify your brain yeah, and you swallow some pills, it's a long way from the mouth to the brain. There's a lot of hurdles you have to overcome before you get to the brain. And by injecting things in certain funnels that lead to the brain, it's a much shorter way, and you have a much more uh, certain delivery of a medication to the brain um, than when you swallow things by mouth. Intravenously, it's almost hopeless. You know, none of the things that you're given intravenously have ever been shown to detox the brain. EDTA doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. DMPS doesn't cross it. DMSA doesn't cross it. There's nothing you have in vitamin C doesn't cross it. There's nothing you have in your tool chest that crosses the blood-brain barrier. But most of the problems, 80% of the problems that at least my patients come to me with are beyond the blood-brain barrier. And with the proper injection techniques, it's very easy to overcome that and deliver whatever agent it is that you decide to deliver um, to the other side of the, of the barrier. So <clears throat> this is sort of like a, a thing that has emerged in the last 15 years that um, the, the environmental issues that, that we are facing are not met with the current things that are available in normal medicine. Yeah, so um, I went to a toxicology meeting a few years ago that was here in Seattle, so that's the American I forgot what the Association of Toxicologists, and the, the top group of the toxicologists. And was one lecture after another was that things are really bad in the environment, and it's too bad that there is no medication available to detox people. That was their, their position. They didn't even mention the legal drugs like DMSA, not to speak of the illegal ones like DMPS and, and zinc TTPA and, and all that. And so, I was quite not shocked, you know, this country, the official toxicology group has a position, you know, things are bad, but there's nothing we can do about this other than preventing. And the government stands in the way of preventing it, and so we can't really do anything, you yeah? And so, so it's pretty much left to us in the field to actually do something about it, yeah? So just kind of say, well, it's not good enough, you know, we have to roll our sleeves up and do something. And as you will see throughout the next three days, that um, the injection techniques that we're using are a huge tool to, um, to help with uh, detoxification, but also as a way of drug delivery for the chronic infections and for modulating the immune system.